I am very pleased now to welcome Amy Kaplan as our convocation speaker. Amy began her journey with Deloitte & Touche over 25 years ago, straight out of Questrom. For the past 28 years, we have celebrated convocation address with a Questrom alum, and this year we continue that tradition. Amy is proof that hard work, determination, and fortitude pay off. Amy moved through various roles within Deloitte, advising complex global financial service clients on everything from risk management to the navigation of financial and organizational challenges. She founded Deloitte's internal audit practice. She is a member of Deloitte's US Board of Directors. In the ultimate achievement, Amy claims a coveted seat at the table as senior partner and vice chairperson at Deloitte and Touche. Amy was the 63rd woman ever to make partner at Deloitte and since has helped to attract, to retain, and to advance talented women at her firm. She was the first partner in charge of the Women's Initiative for the Tri-State Region. She has been an ongoing presence in the firm's diversity and inclusion task force and women's initiative programs. Through her strong commitment to mentorship and leadership, there are now over 1,300 women serving as partners, principals, and directors at Deloitte. Amy fueled her passion for the advancement of women in business through her roles as the president and chairman of the Board of the Women's Forum of New York and also as a board member of the Junior Achievement of New York. We are truly honored and blessed to count Amy as a member of our Questrom alumni community. Please join me in welcoming Amy Kaplan. Wow, this is really impressive. It's an absolute honor and privilege to stand before you and share this important day. And there is nowhere I'd rather be than here today with you. Congratulations to President Brown and Dean Fournier and the Board of Trustees, the, all of the esteemed prof professors and staff that have helped to nurture and counsel and coach and sponsor you and now will graduate this outstanding class. Let me begin with the punchline, which is that you will unequivocally, having a degree from Boston University's Question School of Business, have unlimited opportunities. This is just not another degree. This is an extraordinary degree. And each and every one of you should feel very proud of yourselves. Congratulations to all the mothers and fathers. While they were trying to escape you, I tell you they really appreciate you. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, friends, and significant others who have provided boundless emotional and financial support, and I'll even put into that category all your support pets. The texts, the calls, the care packages, the visits, and the endless coaching has paid off. You are an integral part of the class of 2019 success, for you have taught these students some of their most important lessons the importance of relationships and in being part of a team called family. To do the right thing, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. And to dream big, set goals, and work relentlessly to achieve them. And I know that above all, you hope these graduates take this outstanding education and do something wonderful with it. That they apply it to a profession or a path and build a life they're proud of. Graduates, I am positive that when you leave today, there will be lots of hugs, but for right now, can we give your parents and all of your tribe a round of applause? <laughs> Class of 2019, today is really all about you. This room is filled with love and pride in you and what you've accomplished. It's palpable, I can feel it. 
Undoubtedly, getting to today has not been easy, as you have juggled multiple classes and work and sports and internships and lots of other commitments. Lots of late nights, coffee, tears, triumphs, and I know lots of wonderful memories. Congratulations to the class of 2019. Please give yourself a round of applause. I am sincerely and truly humbled by the talent in this room and the potential for each of you to do amazing things. You will choose to be part of companies who have a purpose and who celebrate diversity and inclusion, where their employees can come to work every day and be their authentic selves. You'll create teams where continuous innovation is commonplace and work in industries we haven't even dreamed of today. And yes, you will solve many of society's problems. You will work virtually and globally and in jobs where machines and humans partner and where teaming is a sport and highly valued. And you will lead differently than I have led and that your parents have led through more complexity and ambiguity than ever before. But I'm here to tell you that you will figure it out. In the next few minutes, I'd like to share my journey with you in the hope that it helps you with your own. I do remember sitting in your seat, trying to pay attention. <laughs> now, I'm sure that none of you feel this way, but when I graduated, I was fairly insecure. I had learned a lot of things, but I wasn't sure that I actually knew how to do anything. When you join any company, you're at the bottom of the pecking order. And I recall that after being recruited to Deloitte, I sat in a staff room with my peers doing rather menial things like photocopying and making coffee. And basically, when anybody senior would come into the room to ask you to do something, you would look down and pretend that you were busy so that they didn't ask you to do something that you actually didn't know how to do. So one day, <laughs> Someone comes in and says, will someone take a package to the 93rd floor of the World Trade Center? And I thought, that's actually something I could do, and I raised my hand. It was a beautiful day when the elevator doors opened and I saw the majestic skyline of New York City. I sort of breathed in, I could feel the excitement in the air, and I approached the recipient of the package and asked him what was happening. And he said, oh, we've brought the best and the brightest partners from all over the world around to, serve, to start an office to serve Wall Street. And I thought, I know what Wall Street is, number two. And I reflected on what I'd learned in business school, which was to get in the ground floor of a business and show your entrepreneurial spirit. And so I asked, can I stay? And the partner looked at me like I was an absolute moron. You're a first-year staff person. This office is for the most experienced practitioners in the world. And I resisted the urge to cry, and I asked the $100 million question, then who will make the coffee and deliver the packages? <laughs> and he said I could stay for the day, and I never, ever went back to that staff room. It turns out that the recipient of the package was our global lead of our banking practice, and I would work with him for the next eight years to learn the business of banking, and I would become a partner. I had taken my first risk by seizing this opportunity, and so my lesson learned was that sometimes opportunities come in paper bags. You need to, you need to recognize them. What I didn't realize at the time in my youthful exuberance was that I had just joined a startup company which became apparent when I came into work the next day and my mug said, victory or death. <laughs> we were really all clear that we had 24 months to turn this around and we worked 24 seven to accomplish our goals. I learned the importance of relentless focus, of perseverance and sweat equity. We never considered failing an option. I think we were too young and naive. We didn't worry about it's not my job, but rather what needs to get done. And it was in those trenches that I really learned what teaming was about. And that great leaders alternate between functioning as captain of the team and having a, being a great utility player, 
as I saw many senior partners sitting there collating decks an hour before our client meetings. In every leadership position I have ever had, my success was directly related to my ability to take talented people, talented individuals, and form an extraordinary team. If you look for the gift that every person brings to the table, instead of focusing on their flaws, think about study groups and focusing on that person who didn't deliver, you will build a team full of strengths. Well, I became a new partner, and lo and behold, I'm back on the bottom of the totem pole there, and I received a large portfolio of small clients. I invest a lot of time to understanding these startup businesses and what they needed and what they could afford. And they needed a lot of expertise, but perhaps couldn't afford or didn't need them full time. And so I started this business, which was basically expertise on demand. And I began to what I refer to today as our co-sourcing practice. And interesting enough, when I went on the internet to look for a word that described collaborative outsourcing, the word co-sourcing was invented. So my next lesson is in every challenge, there's an opportunity to innovate. And being a good listener is a superpower. Any unmet or perhaps unimagined need is always a catalyst of innovation. Think Netflix, think Uber, think Airbnb. And every single one of you can be, should be, will be an innovator. Well, my new sources of revenue didn't go unnoticed, and one day the regional managing partner asked to speak with me. It wasn't a very happy, will you come see me? It was, he wants to know what you're doing. And so with a little bit of trepidation, I walked into his office, and I was surprised. He also was a super listener. He listened intently to my ideas and sent, sensed my passion for serving my clients. And I left his office with two things. First, a new opportunity. He said, I have a lot of bank audit partners, but I don't have an internal audit practice. Go build one. And the second, he would become the single most important mentor in my career. I was scared to death. Now, it's one thing to join a startup. It's another thing to learn how to lead a startup. But I had a mentor who believed in me and my ability to launch this business. And I owed him and I owed me my best effort. And I began to develop the most important skill I have today, the art of figuring it out. I dug out my victory and death hoodie. I put it on. I focused on a vision for the business. I drafted the dream team. The practice, the small little practice, went national, went global. And then I had another idea. When I organized the next meeting with my mentor, who is now our US CEO, I was somewhat less anxious. I was much less clueless. I had tasted success. I really loved victory. And lucky for me, he loved my new idea, and our new risk management business was born. Out of the comfort zone, into the market once more, I was truly beginning to gain some confidence and become a risk taker. Now. If I were to write a note to my younger self, to each and every one of you, to any of you sitting in your chairs with any trepidation about the next chapter in your lives, I want to remind you about all of the wonderful skills you have, more than you know. Your subject matter expertise, your intellectual curiosity, your listening skills, your sense of humor, your ability to get along with people to learn, and to these I would add the skill of figuring it out. There is no position you will get in life that comes with blueprints. And I promise you that all the last four years has, in order for you to graduate from question, you have figured it out. And that is one of your best assets. Well, we have over 25 years to cover, so lucky for you, I'm not gonna take you on a detailed journey. But suffice it to say that every two years, my mentor would tap me on the shoulder and provide me with an opportunity to reinvent myself. I want each and every one of you to be prepared to continually reinvent yourself. But a few things happened during this time. I was starting new businesses, but I was no longer alone because I had followership. Every friend that I had developed in every position was looking out for me and ensuring that I succeed. I had my own personal cheering section. I want you to look around at your classmates, 
You have worked side by side with these friends and colleagues. You have helped each other, you have taught each other, and yes, occasionally relentlessly competed with each other. But sitting next to you is the future C-suite. It's the investors, it's the inventors, it's the board members. Value these relationships, nurture them, keep in touch, and they will become one of your most important assets. Now, my mentor eventually became our global CEO, and I have been given many opportunities and taken many risks because I knew I had his support. But the one thing you have to know about all relationships, and especially mentor relationships, is you need to give in a relationship twice the amount you expect to receive. During my career at Deloitte, I have definitely grown personally and professionally into a confident senior partner and board member with a clear vision of what I love to do, what I'm good at, and what brings me joy, which brings me to my last recommendation. You are each the architect of your own life. That was an epiphany for me, and I'll tell you how I reached it. I made partner with a two-year-old and a newborn. And when I dreamed of the future, I thought I, at some point I would want a third child, but I wasn't sure exactly how I would keep all the balls in the air. I just thought I can't add one more thing. And a very wise partner reminded me that I was the architect of my own life. And that if you imagine your life like a house, with a room for family and work and faith and community and all of your personal interests that you like to do. It was my responsibility to have a vision for what the house looks like and to build a room for each of these aspects of my life, to renovate when necessary, but most importantly, to fill this house with as much joy and as many joyful experiences as I could fit. Our daughter was born five years later and none of us could simply imagine life without her. You will continually be renovating your house to accommodate your changing needs. It's what you should be doing. Don't worry about not having a grand plan and how you'll do something 10 years down the line. Build a house, build a life, that you always dreamed of having. Build a life that you're proud of. Give up the nonsense, volunteer for one less committee, find time to run the marathon, and finger paint with your children. It truly is what you'll remember. Let me end where I began, with total sincerity, knowing that a degree from question means that you have, will have, unlimited opportunities. You're armed with a superior education, encouraged to take risks, and never stop learning. I am confident that I will continue to be humbled by all of your accomplishments, and I wish you much luck on your personal journeys. Thank you so much.